for an adult audience. Slip Love Line may contain sexually oriented content. Mm-hmm. Listener discretion is advised. Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Door Slam and Drew, you SOB. Hey, I was peeing. Oh, okay. <laughs> It's a good thing you weren't going number two. Uh, it was a very good thing. When it made the first hour. I still have to button my pants. Oh, oh, oh his penis is hanging out. Oh, my goodness. That is horrible. Uh, phone number for Loveline, 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board-certified physician, addiction medicine specialist, and circumcised, as it turns out. You already knew that. Carrie Hart, who is a... Uh, you forgotten motor- already? <laughs> you know, it's always so dark. Uh, Carrie Hart is uh, coming here tonight. Last time with the lights on, you said I was fat. True. I said it looked like you filled out a little okay. bit. I didn't say you were fat. Okay. Okay. Are you okay? Um, okay, yeah. All right. Seriously, I, you look good for a man of your age, but you're not 19 anymore, and you can't be, uh. and you can't fill that void in my life. Carrie Hart, who's uh, not gay like me and Drew, turns out uh, he rides uh, motocross and he's uh, going to be in the uh, X Games or is in the X Games and uh, is also featured in the Ultimate X Games movie that's uh, IMAX and all that kind of stuff and MTV Cribs and uh, got punked and all sorts of stuff like that. So he is coming. Oh, he's dating pop star Pink, too, who uh, I met at the uh, Weenie Roast a few months ago and uh, she was dying to come on the show and... Well, that was a few months ago. Then her publicist got in the way. That's right. Those evil, evil, blood-sucking vermin known as publicists. So anyway, uh, Carrie is going to be in here at uh, 1030, and uh, we are going to take some calls. Well, let's talk about last week for a second, Drew. All right. You were in Toronto, right? Yeah. Lovely blackout. Yeah. Good times. Yeah. Yeah. So a couple of things. You were acting on the uh, Olsen Twins movie. I was, I don't know if acting would be the right word. I was on it, yeah. Was uh, how was that? How were they? Fun. They're great, delightful. Do you talk to them? Yeah. They play your daughters. Yeah, you have to talk to them. Yeah, yeah. What do they look like? Little in person? L- they're tiny, tiny people. Yeah, they're tiny spinners. We call them. Yeah. And uh, they uh, did what? Now, how did they cast you? What's I'm, the story behind that? Never I, asked. I, no one can seem to be able to tell me. I don't know. Well, you were talking to them. They don't. They, somebody said the casting director suggested it, and they thought it was a cool idea. Okay, That's so right. they didn't. They weren't uh, fans of yours from way back, no, or they, knew your work from. We didn't get. We were pretty busy. I mean, it was. It was like you know, too, too busy. The little yeah. uh, little ass sucking, really. I, I kissed a little holes in the ass. Good, of course, but, you good. Know, they're but, billionaires, yeah. us too. No, they're very sweet and very very nice. And then pros, they work hard. Yeah. You oh. know, uh, the, the most impressive thing for me is that there was somebody from a kid from Make a Wish Foundation on the set every day. Mm-hmm. I mean, these kids, you know, their, their wish is to meet the Olsen. You know, oh, like really? Kate and Ashley. Yeah. And they and the girls would, you know, they'd work their ass off for 10 hours, and then they'd get off and put out for these kids, too, and really spend time with them and stuff. So, That's nice. It turn, was nice. Turn out the kid was a better actor than Drew. Oh, of course. <laughs> of course. Bottle, body riddled with leukemia and tumors in his brain, but still could get through the copy. Not me. Uh, now, how did you do? You okay? Yeah, I think it's fine. I mean, yeah. it, it, it's... Yeah, it's sort mm-hmm. of tailor made for you. Yeah, Squaresville guys, Square Doctor, multiple p- father of multiples. I mean, it's perfect. It's amazing. And, and uh, they're the multiples your father of, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. They're another set. And uh, what about the nightlife there in Toronto? I, mm, no, not, I didn't get anything. No. What are those? Oh, you watch this. Yeah. No, I. <laughs> what is? Uh, Drew said, "Great strip clubs." He just slid. No, I didn't. Post it. Hold no. on, hold on. Oh, high five. He gave me a high five, everybody. All right, well, now what about... I will tell you that Daryl Hammond and I had to walk around the streets. We were going to do the show Thursday night from Toronto. Right. The lights go out. They close every building in the city. You right. can't go in the buildings. I, I don't right. know what the hell is with Toronto. All the elevators weren't working and stuff anyway. And we couldn't find food or water. They don't, they don't pump the water up into the buildings. You have to like, find a... Re- no restaurants open. We really? find a, a Diet Coke and a bag of peanuts. Wow. Yeah. Slumming it with Daryl Hammond. Daryl Hammond walking Thank, around Toronto. How weird was that? Thank God he was doing his Clinton impersonation the entire time to keep true. <laughs> Occupied. Stitches. Let me yeah. say to the people of America and the nations of the world that I hate your ass. I swear to God I do. Well, I like Daryl Hammond. Although okay. he's crazy, but he's really funny on Saturday Night Live, so we should get him uh, back on this show. All right. I'll be doing, I think I'll do some more stuff with him. i got to go back three more times. Yeah. All right. So. One, all right. So you you go back and you finish your shooting your scenes on uh, yeah. three more times. Yeah, yeah. All right. And the Olsons, good people. Absolutely. 
And what are they doing? I, they can't go out or anything, can no, they? No, I mean, they, every, you know, we, we were filming in a suburb in a house, and every day you'd walk out of that house, there'd be three or 400 kids, kids up really? there, just, just for them to wave it. It's like Michael Jackson or something. It's, it's nuts. And they have security guards around them and stuff all the time. Right. Meanwhile, yeah. you and Daryl Hammond are walking well, we'll around for, <laughs> looking for hookers peanuts. at 3 in the morning in a blacked-out Toronto. Sad. Very My sad. Wife. All right. There we go. Stacy. Yes? You're 21? Yes. What's up? Okay, well, I was with, I had a boyfriend, and we were together, and things were pretty good, and he was in a band, and from day one, he told me that music is and always will be his first love, and, like, I still stay with him. Yeah. So, eventually, like, as the band thing, like, started picking up, and one of the guys had gone to L.A. to try to get a record deal or something, but then he decides that he just wants to be friends until he gets the band thing figured out. So, like, I was completely heartbroken. But, mm -hmm. like, we still kind of talked. And now it's, like, the only time he wants to see me is for sex. Mm -hmm. And you're I... Okay. What? You're, you're okay with that? Not really. Like, mm -hmm. I don't... Well want to go up there anymore he lives right. two, like two hours away from me so every time well, stacy don't there's no why do you got to go up there for sex he should be coming down to you if he's going to have sex and just because he's having sex with you does not mean he's invested emotionally in fact it means less emotionally right right he means, he means you are just that now and that's not usually something that recovers right so you, you got to accept the reality. The question really here in you is why do you accept the relationship from somebody who's unavailable? Where has that been the pattern in your life in the past? Well, he's in a band. Yeah, but her She's dad 21. left. Dad left. What's the name of the band? I think it's Undone. Uh -huh. well, okay, the band that he was in that he broke up with me to be in, he quit after uh -huh. he broke up with me. And he came running back to you? No. Oh, yeah. no, I'm mistaken. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. So no, listen, stay, then, Stacey. Like, Listen, yeah, listen, yeah, he broke up with you. Come on. And uh, don't torture yourself and he, like this. He Have the dignity just to walk away. He didn't break up with you for the band. He broke up with you because he was tired of you. When a guy says, let's be friends, there's a billion reasons. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> They're all that. It, yeah. Whatever the reason, don't just, just start saying the outfit, putting fingers in your ears at that point. All right. Okay. So you move on. You move on. It's fine. Find a nice guy. It's, okay, it's not in a band. The question is, though, Find again. Find a nice if, guy. Are you kidding when me? When did your dad leave? Why did I ask you the question? All right. Where's your dad? He lived with me, like, well, I live with him. Okay. Did you your whole life? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Stacy? Why, what? you can't find a nice guy? Not where I live. Where are you? You're in Indiana? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of pricks in Indiana. Like, you can right. find a nice guy if you're interested in a nice guy, but you're not excited by a nice guy. You want a dangerous guy. No, I like an available nice guy. guy. I like the attention. Like, I, you I like the attention a nice guy weird. gives you. Well, good. Then just go find no, some. She likes geek. the attention of a rock star gets, and she likes basking Not in the nar narcissistic glow of all that. Really? Or what do you like? Me? What yeah, do you, you mean, like? What am I like? Well, do you like the attention a guy gives you or not? Right. Yeah. yeah. I like knowing. Shut up, that. would you, Drew? Please. All right. Listen. Find a nice guy. They're out there. This guy isn't the guy for you. All right. That's enough. <laughs> so we're going to look. Women, 21-year-old women are, who are attracted to guys in bands are not attracted to nice guys. Right. There's way more nice guys than there are guys in bands. But, but she's gone further down the path than most in terms of torching herself with this. Most of them go, oh, enough, enough, enough. Right. She's still going and going back to the All right. well. All right. Uh, uh, no, did no. I press the wrong button? Yeah, yeah. All right. Tim? Yeah. You're 17? Yo. What's yeah. up? Hey, I got a little uh, rap I wrote for you guys earlier today. Oh, you did? Yeah. Just ear earlier today, huh? You weren't working on it for the past six months? Uh, no, it was like 10 o'clock. Okay. Now. All right, well, I'm, I'm going to get it. Zombies. I'm going to get in um, my uh, prepared to listen to something that sucks <laughs> posture. <laughs> That's why it looks like you're about to receive oral sex posture. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah. So the sucking part confused me. Okay. <laughs> There we go. All right, that's better. Go ahead, Tim. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> I got a question after this, too, but... Yeah. First this. We'll see how this goes. If your love life sucks and you don't know what to do, pick up the phone and call Adam and Drew. If you had a rough day and feel some aggravation, tune in the love line to hear Adam talk about masturbation. Take their advice and don't crank out a ton of kids. 
you don't got to be retired just because everyone else is. I needed a spot where I could relax and just think, so I took Adam's advice, now I pissed in the sink. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I like that song, something, 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 a ziga, a zi. I don't know the words, Drew knows them better than me. Anyway, Love Line is the best damn radio show out. Dr. Drew and Adam Crowler are some bad mothers. Shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, wow. yeah nice. that is solid. Yeah. What? Every, every, the, every rapping uh, every white guy. Yeah, we it know. It's the same cadence, yeah. though. It's always, my name is Adam, and I'm here to say. <laughs> Actually, nice, I'm half Tim. black and half white. Oh, really? Well, in yeah. that case, you're horrible. you got to let the black half of you write those raps next time. No, the rap was good. It was the delivery of those. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. The black half needs to write it and deliver it. Yeah. Uh, all, all right. right well, that, that, no, that was solid, Tim. That was right. that was lovely. All now, right, what's your thanks. question? All right. Well, um, about a month ago, I got um, arrested because I had sex with a 16-year-old. Nice. And mm -hmm. like now, I'm going up against like the charges of sexual misconduct, and I was just kind of wondering what you guys thought if it was ridiculous or not, because I think it's like retarded. Well, you're 17, right? Yeah. It's it's serious. And we've talked to people who have had some real serious consequences from, the, from this sort of thing. The laws are in place for a reason, to protect people from harm. Yeah, but not 16-year-olds from 17-year-olds. I, I know. Is However, it? it's a little bit extreme, and I would expect that you wouldn't sort of have the book thrown at you. Yet, if you have got an... What the hell is that? That's the door. Oh. Yet, if, we, if you have an angry parent coming after you, it can yeah, get pretty serious. Morning. Ooh, I mean, it can get pretty serious, Tim. This is not, this is not, do not dismiss this as, oh, it, it, how ridiculous, because the law's on their side. Yeah, well, I know. How did you get busted? Uh, she, she went off to church and was, like, bragging about it, like, ooh, I got my freak on last night, and, oh, and plus she has a boyfriend. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Oh, wait, where, you're calling from New York, right? Yeah. Where'd you find a Mormon in New York? Um, up in this, like, Hicktown, Newark, man. I used to live there. Like All right, no work. All right, and and, and 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 have you have you studied the uh, age of consent laws? Oh, well, not really. I uh -huh. found out it was seventeen afterwards. Mm. I was like, All right. What? All right. All right. Listen, I uh, here's what you need to do: put on a goddamn tie, and uh, do that thing where you clasp your hands and put them in front of you and sort of hang your head a little bit, and do like yes sir and no sir, and you'll be fine with the judge. Just kiss a little ass and act scared, because I, I don't think. First off, I, we've talked about this before. Does it have to vary from state to state to state, the age of consent? I mean, if you'd ask most people, hey, 17-year-old getting it on with a 16-year-old, anything illegal about that? I'd say about 95% of the population, even in the, in the states and cities where it wasn't legal, would say, yeah, it sounds legal. I mean, whether they agreed with it or not, it yeah. certainly sounds legal, doesn't it? Yeah. Most states have a thing where if it's somebody like within a couple of years of that age, it's okay. Mm-hmm. So. All right. You got a lot of thoughts on that, don't you, Drew? You know my plan. What? One, one, one age, age for all, yeah. But, but does it have to go with Thailand and Tibet, or can it just be United States? No, Thailand should remain 11. Yeah, okay. Tibet, 9. But right. out here, you just do everything at 18. I mean... Here's you got you got like a couple ages here. You got your 16 for your driver's license. You got your 18. That's for, changing. 16 is changing. All right, but it's 16 now, right? Not quite. 16 is right. 18 for uh, you know voting. voting and enlisting in the army and a few other things like that. And then you got your 21 for your booze. Let's just make it 18. You turn 18, you can buy cigarettes. You can enlist in the army. You can vote. Just make it 18. Then everyone knows. Because I don't think people know what it, whatever it is in their land. Thank God I never got laid in high school, so I wasn't affected by these laws. <laughs> but Drew, on the other hand, a man of exquisite passion, a man who uh, drove down to Chinatown to buy condoms, would have been affected back then. Yes, Drew? Yes. Molly? Yeah? You're 24? I am 24. What's up? Oh! Delayed high five by Drew with the man of passion in Chinatown. Oh, what are you doing with all yeah. those condoms? <laughs> you sell two friends? No, I'm uh, I'm a horn. Don't I know you? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so Molly, what's going on? So um, my boyfriend and I were just having sex, and when he was done, he pulled out, but the condom stayed in, and we didn't realize it for a couple of minutes. Good times. And we don't know if we're being neurotic or if I should take an, a morning after pill. 
Absolutely. Why, why, why would that be neurotic? That, that is a condom failure. Why would really? that be neurotic? Absolutely. I mean, the well, sooner you, you know, get it, the it better. Well, you know, it was kind of like the, the edge of the condom was outside of me, and so we thought... Maybe well, we're... You, you could still see it, even though it slipped off him, right? E yes. You like, it wasn't lost head. inside. Yeah, right, right. yeah. Yeah, but let me say this. Uh, How is it that you didn't realize that for quite some time <laughs> if the end was hanging out of you? Like, Actually, just... our first reaction was we got giggly because <laughs> ridiculous when he found it yeah oh he yeah, found I don't it know. i i i don't i don't i have no answer for that no but you don't well it you could have been out <laughs> it, it could have been more inside at one point too right you know what i'm saying it could have worked yeah, yeah. it's that know, like, it's it's that issue well, where, that, that mandates the morning after well, where did you start your search for it in the car <laughs> under the sofa or did you did he really think about it did he realize it was off no, he was just um, touching me. But but why didn't he, he notice? It. Why didn't he notice there was no condom on his penis when he pulled out? He, I don't know. Why, why didn't you notice there was no condom on your penis when you pulled uh, out? I'll tell you why. Because he was done. <laughs> I mean, you don't sweat the details when you're done. He was content. That's right. He was done. He was at that it was just like a medical waste receptacle at the uh, hospital, right? It's so again a difference between men and women. Somehow her, her notion is that of content, and yours is done. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not a different content. thing. No, it's done. Content is content is uh, you know after you you make uh, two passes through the Caesar's buffet and you unbutton your pants <laughs> once and you lean back yeah, and you're content. sucking on a a uh, martini. That that's content. But yeah. this is this is done. done. You sort of this is to uh, exist a remember the Flintstones <laughs> when the whistle would blow and Fred would head out from work by sliding yeah. down the dinosaur's tail. Yeah, that's done. That's done. That's yeah. not content. That's done. Yeah. All right. So morning after pill. Yes. Morning after pill, yes. <laughs> morning after pill. All right. Let's uh, talk to Travis, who's 16. Travis? Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, sure, Travis. Dr. Drew, uh, congratulations on your new book and your part in the oh, Ultimate yeah. movie. Thank you, Travis. But the book, we, you got to let me talk about this now, because it's coming out no, on no, Thursday or Friday. We talked about it when you were... When no, we were it's important here. to me. It's, it, please yeah. go buy this book. It's called Cracked, and it is a good... I, it's something I'm very proud of. Your, your wife called me today, Adam, to tell me that you she weeped and loved it and all this stuff. Mm, that was my girlfriend. Oh. oh yeah. yeah, I'm planning on buying that book and the Adam and Drew book as well. Yeah. Well, just buy Cracked. Just okay. buy Cracked. <laughs> okay. Anyway, the yeah. thing is, um, I started liking this girl about a year ago, but I didn't go ahead and do something stupid to screw it up like I usually do because... She's like three years older than me, and I didn't know what to do, you know? Uh -huh. And um, anyway, so I just waited and waited, and I got to see her some from, because, like, after she graduated, because we went to the same church and stuff, mm -hmm. so I'm kind of nervous. Yeah, yeah. That's all right. Well, hold on and, a second. When uh, Travis says he got to see her some, I picture him in the bushes at night <laughs> with the you know, camouflage house. on yeah. his face, yeah. looking like an army ranger, yeah. you know, wearing that. Wearing like a, a knit cap with a branch stuck into it and sliding his head up from the like hedge. Rolling to bush to bush. <laughs> no, the bush traveling oh, yeah. like they would do in a cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they would stop and sit down, then get up, <laughs> sit down again. I miss that humor, by the way. Where's that bush traveling humor? Travis? I'm not quite that fanatic about it. Okay, okay. so you, you'd see her at church. Yeah, but anyway, uh, about at the end of this previous school year, I found out that she's pregnant. Mm -hmm. So I didn't like her like that anymore because I can't deal with all that. Sure. But she was always friendly to me in the past, so I figured maybe I could ask her some stuff about her pregnancy and maybe refer to her the morning after pill in case the situation should arise again. Oh, I'm sure she loved that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, and I wasn't going to be able to see her for a while because of the summer and I go to visit my mom. So I was trying to call her and I got a hold of her sister. And she was going to get her email address for me, but her boyfriend said I couldn't have it. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and he talked to me for a while, but I didn't know well, what to say. So, what did he say to you? Uh, he was just like, I was just like, I just want to talk to her about stuff, and he was like, Well, how do you think I'd feel? I mean, how do you oh, think boy. you'd feel if you were in my situation? That's now? a lovely moment. How old is the, boy the boyfriend? He's 19. And or, he's her, well, the father. Is he the father sure. of the child? Yeah. Oh, that right. must have been a comfortable moment. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, be prepared for many uncomfortable moments to come. Why? Yes, life's In that life. way. Okay. Yeah, right. It's embarrassing. It's humiliating, this life. So, hey, Travis. Yeah? Okay, so you're done with her. Well, no, I just, 
I just need to clear mm. things up, make it. Um, no, 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 you just need you, to you find need, a girl. You need a hooker, yeah, so that you need, need to clear things oh, up. Yeah. You need to clear up your blue balls, is what you need to clear up in your skin. That's all you need to clear up. You sure? Travis, uh, yes, please. Yes, Travis, yes. Yes, this is not mm. the one. Who are you talking to? No, I just, I just want to establish a friendship with her. You no, know. you no, care. Travis, no. don't do she's, that yourself. She's 18. First off, well, the difference 19. between. She's what? 19. She's 19. The difference between her pregnant ass at 19 and your squirrely ass at 16 is... Six light years. Six light years and three widths of the Grand Canyon. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. Night and day. Out of your league. And you know what? You don't want her. And she's not... No, no, yeah. This is trouble, and she's not interested in having a friend. She has lots of friends. Yes. And you don't want a friend either. You just don't yeah. know it. You're a virgin, right, Travis? Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. All right, and you do not want this uh, well-worn piece of highway over here that has this uh, biker boyfriend, okay? Well, he doesn't even know what he needs. A new perspective. He needs okay. an, a girlfriend. You, so he you're, doesn't, yeah, you know, you're starting school soon, right? Yeah, tomorrow. Oh, okay. Good. You're gonna. What are you going into? Eleventh grade. Yep. You're gonna be junior. Good. Now you get your pick of the ninth and tenth graders. But but as we've just learned, don't do anything with them. You can go to jail. Yeah. Yeah. No. All right, buddy. That's what you do. Fresh fresh crop. But. That's what I used to announce every year. Fresh crop coming in. And that all planned out. I did, the I did, harvest would wither, though, every time, though, huh? I know. Just dying on the vine. Or my friends would uh, hump, hump my bounty. Oh. But uh, <laughs> my bounty. <laughs> Here's the deal. I went to high school. Uh, my high school is 10th, 11th, and 12th, just three years. So when I was in the 10th grade, I was like, well, you know, you're a scrub. I mean, right. uh, you don't know anybody. But 11th grade, I was like, all right. It's time for Corolla to weave his ma magic. And then uh, 12th grade then twelfth grade <laughs> came around, and it was like, all right, now i got my choice of the 10th and the 11th graders and the 12th graders who have been uh, softening up. I've been softening up their fortifications like a battleship yeah. bombarding yeah. Uh, a pill machine pillbox on uh, the sands of Normandy for, for years. Unfortunately. Got, yeah, I got nothing. Yeah. And then it was off to uh, clean carpets with Oswaldo. Yeah, it was a tough run, tough run. Meanwhile, Drew's strutting around. He's got a blazer on. He's got his crest, the family crest woven in. He's got a case of condoms he bought at the Chinese market earlier that day. Big man on campus. Class president. Poor Adam. Yeah. We feel for him. All right. But the worm is turned. The, the wood? Yeah. We're going to take ourselves a uh, little break. Uh, Kerry Hart is uh, going to come in here, the uh, motocross king. We'll uh, take a quick break. And he's going to get here at 1030, so probably come back and then bring him back after he gets in okay. here. Right. We'll be right back after this. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Carrie Hart, uh, motocross man, is uh, supposed to come in here, but now we've been informed that he's broken his ankle during some uh, practice on uh, yesterday or today. I guess today. today. just broke his ankle. And uh, now they don't know where he is. So maybe he comes in and uh, maybe he doesn't. We'll uh, find out as the uh, show wears on. All right. You know, maybe he was going half speed. That's when he get hurt, Drew. Right. That's what my old football coach yeah. used to say. When you go half speed. That's when you get hurt. That's when you get hurt. And it, it, you get hurt that way. It, it yeah. makes sense. Because if you get in an accident going 10 miles an hour. Way worse than 30 miles an hour. Oh. Oh, yeah. And still still get worse than 70. Of course. Or 170. Go speed, yeah. You got to go full speed. Yeah. Or you get hurt. That's right. That and water's bad for you. <laughs> Those are the two things I learned in the 70s. Jacob? Yeah, hi. You're 16? Yeah. What's up? My girlfriend has orgasms like, okay, I've heard you guys say that, like, if you're 15 or 16, you rarely have orgasms unless, like, with oral sex, right? Except for the one version where it's stuff just falls out of them, which is what okay, your girlfriend well, does. My girlfriend can have orgasms when, like, I'm not even touching her, she says. Right. Like, yeah. I could, I could, that is one version of the female. That's you know what I like, to Guys should take credit for that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's I'm nice, to, nice to be that woman, but if she's having orgasms and you're not even touching her, it's hard to lay claim to them. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? I mean, I didn't know if she was just thinking she was having them and not really, you know. No, no she can be having the, the multi, Truly multi-orgasmic women can have them extremely easily. They can do be doing sit-ups, things like that, and, the, and there's no refractoriness. They just have one after the other after the other. So yep. it's normal. 
It's normal for her. It's, it's not the usual. It's a, a small percentage, but it's uh, lucky. If people get into this whole, is it normal, is it abnormal, and yeah. Drew just said it's normal for her, and there's a whole category of people that fall under that heading, that yeah, you, yeah. you should probably shed some light it's, on that. It's normal. All right, that's enough. It's getting boring okay, now. Okay, it's normal. Now, go ahead, sorry. No, it's normal, but it's uncommon. And so when people say normal, sometimes they mean average. And so it's not an average thing. It's not routine, but it is not ab no, not pathological. I so. think when people say normal, and especially when they're talking to a doctor, they're thinking there's something, something wrong. wrong. Yeah, nothing right. is wrong. Right. This is a good thing. In fact, nothing wrong. It's extra good. It can be abnormal, but normal for her, and that's fine. Yeah. All right. Oops, I screwed that up. Let's uh, talk to uh, Chris, who's 18. Chris? Hey, what's up, man? Hey, what's up? Uh, I was going to say you're like the funniest man alive and you need to save the man show before it gets taken off the air man well and it's on the air i know man but it's just doing bad i saw the first episode of nine and i didn't like it at all it just wasn't oh. the same without you guys you well, know, thanks Jimmy. brother Thank and you. drew you're, you give great advice man That's Chris. What's but uh on, my question is man like just the past like year i've been really down and stuff hang on chris adam's listening to the music playing in the background trying to identify oh, it i'm sorry i see that i see that look on his face i'm sorry right? man. Is that you're doing? yeah what was that in the background <laughs> oh it's beloved oh beloved yeah that's what i was gonna say <laughs> no but uh sorry about that you smoke some weed chris yeah no it started like a couple months ago because i was just really down and the like, weed yeah well it's cause... affected you uh you must have really stepped it up a little bit because we can hear it on you yeah well i'm really nervous too all right all right but like i've been down and i'm just losing a lot of sleep and then it caused a lot of problems at home and then my dad who i hadn't talked to in forever started calling me again and like i was about to get kicked out of my house so i went to visit him and then like he went crazy and we got in a lot of fights and stuff and like i just started smoking it and then i got really homesick and i started losing my appetite all the time well, I depressed. can't, like, really eat that well, much. Chris, that's, that's depression. Yeah. And marijuana, though it initially might make that feel somewhat better, ends up contributing to the, to the depression. Yeah, well, I, I'm going to the doctor tomorrow, but I was really nervous about it, and I didn't... No, nah, don't be nervous. You should be nervous about being depressed. Yeah. But not about treating your depression. No, the, yeah. Write that down, Jerome. Exactly. There are very good depression treatments out there, and you, should, you need to take advantage of that. You're suffering with this, and it's unnecessary. I was... It's just really weird because it came out of nowhere. Like, I'd never lost my appetite like that before. It was just... Well, that's what depression can be. It's a biological state. And once you fall into it, it it's, it's truly feels like an illness. You know, you can't eat, yeah. can't sleep. Yeah, I've been so depressed for so long, man. Just, well, I've like had all kinds of family problems. And uh, stuff. Yeah, I do think, Chris, that if you're just seeing a regular doctor, they're going to put you on some medication. And that shouldn't be all you do. It, uh, you, clearly, medication is warranted when you're as depressed as you sound. But treat you know therapy is also an important piece of this too. So get some talk cure in there also. Hey, good times. I just got back from Pebble Beach. Yeah, how was that? Oh man. Yeah. That's uh, it's in Northern California for those of you around the country don't know where it is. At Carmel, Big Sur. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Fantastic, yeah. lovey. Yeah. <laughs> Seventy three degrees. Yeah, all the time. Yes, and I mean, that. this just went, this was a blast furnace in Los Angeles. The last four or five days have just been, I went upstairs in my house on uh, Thursday before I left. I was going to take catch a nap. It was about 7.30 at night, and the thermostat read 91 degrees. Mm. 91. Mm. Into the 90s in my bedroom, everybody. At night. Yes. Mm. Yes, at night. Nice. So, uh... Carmel is uh, 73, got a nice wind blowing off the ocean. How are the cars? Nothing. Uh, they have this big uh, car concourse thing over there at the uh, Pebble Beach Golf Club. Nothing but five million dollar Ferraris. Was it the same everywhere. thing as the, the thing you saw in England? Yeah, it was. Uh, it was uh, close to that. More really? cars at this thing. Though. Wow. Yeah. Oh man. Oh man. Wow. Saw Jay Leno there. Talked talk to him. To, yeah. Talked to him about cars. Wow. <laughs> Here's the great news about going to one of these car things. You can talk to people about cars. That's it. You yeah. know, but it's fun. You just, uh, t the total stranger, you just start talking. Next thing you know, you're talking about cars. It's yeah. like uh, the, the the world's uh, best first date. You know, there's no lulls because it's just car this and car that. Just talk to car guys about cars and cars and more cars. But, uh, yeah, true, you'd hate it. But Ugh. but it was great. Got to uh, drive the new uh, Ford GT40. 
Oh. I, I, <laughs> yeah, it was really a, <laughs> it was really crazy, but uh I won't bore everyone with the uh all the uh, details, but uh, Ford has this new sports car that's coming it. out. It's, it's been on the drawing boards for like uh, 2 years. It's 500 horsepower. It's a $150,000 car. It's oh. a, basically a replica of their uh, Le Mans winning car from uh, like 66 and 7 and 8, like one like is, you know, the real version of this car cost $8 million. Now it's in a museum somewhere. But anyway, they built the whole prototype, put me in the car, oh. I was driving it down uh, Highway 1 in uh, Carmel. Oh, my God. They let you loose with it. Yeah. Well, they, they had me sandwiched in between <laughs> Two uh, Saab convertibles that they were driving. But I, what I would do is I would slow down, let the one ahead of me get uh, out a couple hundred yeah. yards, and I would just burn rubber to them. And then the car stalled, and it wouldn't start again, and we were trapped by the side of the road for like an hour. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Humiliating for them. Wow. Yeah. But a beautiful car. Beautiful, drill. 500. Oh, my car. God. Six-speed, two-seater. Oh, <laughs> just. Probably doesn't Whatever. weigh anything. It's like all aluminum. All carbon fiber and aluminum. Ceramic wheels. Ceramic Breaks, wasn't it? Say everything. Yeah. Everything. Oh, God. <laughs> Shelby? Yep. It's ironic that your name is uh, Shelby because... Uh, You're talking about things look like a Mustang, right? Yeah, Carol Shelby was uh, out there, and uh, all those uh, Shelby Cobras and Daytonas and GT350s all racing at Laguna Seca. Oh, my God. What a weekend. Go ahead there, Shelby. All right. Um, I've been through treatment in the past, like, two times. Um, I was kicked out of my second treatment. For what? And, um, because the kid that I was in there with, he started, you know, smoking pot and gave me a bag and was like, here, you know, hold on to it. You can smoke it if you want. And, you know, I was in treatment for alcohol and marijuana and stuff. And so, of course, you know, I smoked it. And then his UA came back dirty, and so he just ratted me out. And then my that's, mom that's got not, pissed and seems that I was... Wait a minute, Shelby, whoa, whoa, whoa. You you were kicked out for using in treatment, regardless of the circumstance. He you ran it. You used in treatment. Yeah. That, that's oh, your yeah. responsibility. That's what you. That's the role you played in your termination of addiction treatment. Okay. Yeah. So did you go on to get more treatment? Um. Well, not quite yet. Um. My mom kicked me out of the house after that because my dad is an alcoholic and an addict and everything like that, and she didn't want to put up with you know with me wrecking my life. So she kicked is me she, out of my house. She's going to Al-Anon now. No, she never did anything like that. Huh, like, okay. she went once, but she didn't like it. And I was, like, right. I was in AA and everything, and I tried, you know, like, fixing everything. But lately, I don't know, it's just, like, my dad left my family about eight or nine years ago, and we haven't seen him since. And so then when my mom kicked me out of the house, it was just kind of like, okay, well, you know, there's my other parent just abandoning me. And right, I right. started, like, drinking more. Sure. And just doing, like, harder drugs and, like, all right. like all I've ever done, you know, is smoke pot. So what, what is drink. your question? It's a progressive disease, and now it's progressed. So what, what's the well, question? Well, I'm just curious. Like, now I find my, I'm doing coke and meth, and I just don't know, like, if I should go back through treatment because my therapist told me that, like, if I go back again, I'm not going to get anything out of it, just a waste of money. And I don't know if maybe I should just, like, move. Ooh, away your therapist told you not to go back into treatment even so though you're mom, abusing I drugs? What? Yeah, but you told my mom that it wasn't necessary because I have learned everything that I needed to know in treatment. And well, that's ridiculous. That is ridiculous because you need to be in a maybe. maybe I'm sure sounds whatever, like a mad yeah. lib too. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. That. Yeah, whatever was said, I doubt it was exactly that. And I don't want to countermand what your therapist is saying. Obviously, he or she knows you better. However, there's it's clearly the case that you need a medically managed detox and you need a highly structured environment for many months to come. Whether you're actually actively involved in a rehab or not doesn't even matter. You need to be in a highly structured environment for several months, period. And that, from my perspective, it's beneficial if you also are engaging in a very comprehensive program of treatment. Obviously, people relapse. Relapse is part of the disease, part of recovery. You've had a relapse. You've, got, you've learned something. Your disease has progressed. Now let's get on with it. Get back to treatment. It's, it's not a cognitive process. It's not something you, where you're learning things so much as having experiences. And those experiences usually actually take about three years to really uh, take hold. So get with it, all right? All right. Nah, but it doesn't, good, but doesn't take a few weeks. takes a few years. But good times, though, right? Um, no. <laughs> all right, baby. Well, let's get... Oh, no. Get yourself some help. Um, what could be more important than this? Would it work, though, if I just kind of, like, moved away from the situation I am? No, we call that doing a geographic. That never works. Never That's works. right. That's right. Now, you can certainly go to a different program. 
And, and but wherever I think it's important that you get treatment where you're going to live. I think that's the optimum thing to do. Mm-hmm. 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 All right. Mm-hmm. Well, good times, though, right? Yeah, of course. All right. We're going to take ourselves a uh, little break, and we'll be right back. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. So I'm uh, up in uh, Pebble Beach uh, today, and... Uh, out in uh, uh, sort of uh, little, central northern California. Yeah, Big Sur area, Carmel, beautiful, beautiful place. And uh, just down at the uh, Pebble Beach uh, Country Club, looking at all the beautiful cars. And I'm uh, sitting there at the GM hospitality tent on my uh, second glass of uh, Vouv Clicquot. Did I pronounce that right? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Vouv Clicquot. Never, yeah. It's not going to get better. Champagne. So, yeah. Anyway. Enjoying myself, and uh, here comes a uh, Hispanic celebrity, and I know this guy. I know he's a comedian. I know he's Hispanic, and I and, and, and I know him. And I'm I'm trying to go. I'm going for it. Well, I got it narrowed down. It's it's either it's either George Lopez or Paul Rodriguez, and, but I'm thinking which one is it? And you always feel like an extra a hole when there's a nationality thing, and you pick the wrong guy of the same uh, nationality. It's like, all right, so you know two Mexicans, and you guessed wrong this gotta time. Got George Lopez. Right. Well, I'm, I I can't figure out who oh, it is. Oh my and god! I, I got it down, and, and now I see sees me. He's yeah. sitting at their table, and they starting to get up. We haven't seen Paul Rodriguez in a long time. Make right? his way over. Well, that's what I was thinking, but I, I it just. I, you know, I had a couple of glasses of uh, champagne, and my mind was swimming a little. So I was like, is that George Lopez or is that Paul Rodriguez? And he's walking over, and I lean over to uh, my buddy, the uh, Weeves, and I say, uh, oh, no. who? Uh, what made who? you do that? <laughs> I said, do, uh, what's this dude's name? Do you know this dude? And he goes, he looks in for a minute, he looks funny, and he goes, Paul he goes no, sorry. <laughs> do you, you got to slide it in? All right. He goes, Paul Lopez. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, okay, you stoner. Now I'm screwed. Now I'm really after you. Have the only I gave you two. You had two options. You came. You you came up with the uh, like a hyphenated third hybrid. option, hybrid that did me. Now I'm worse. Now I'm really. Now I'm mad at you, and I can't figure out who it was. But then it, it hit me. The uh, the George Lopez jumped in right at the uh, last. There's second. a lot bigger too, and he's a bigger guy. He, I knew who this guy was. Yeah. I just thought I was assigning him yeah. the wrong name. <laughs> Paul Lopez. All right. Uh, where uh, where were we? Four. Drew, what's that part of you that has to try to sneak the You know what? I, I, was just, I was just observing it. I'm not aware that I'm talking even. Yeah. Just, I'm, not, I'm, like, I'm anticipating what you're going to say. I'm just, just out to pay attention. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you know you're talking now? Barely. Okay. Brooke? Yeah. Oh. You're 19? Yes. All right. Michelle, you see what I'm talking about now with Drew? You see that? You see what just went on there? You saw what went on there, right? Explain it to him. You see what, what I was doing? Like, what do you do? Huh? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. When you're when you when when your uh, when your wife is reading a bedtime story to your kids, do you, and right at the last second, you just run in and, and said, "Hey, he uh, he!" But they, their house was made of bricks. <laughs> they couldn't have fought. No, they, no. The wall couldn't fall down. Like, like it's made of bricks. It's made of bricks, right? Right? Tell me. It's like that. That's what I do. All right. Well, relax. Brooke, take a chill pill, Drew. Yeah. Brooke, you're 19. Yes. What's up? Okay. Um, I had met this guy named Ryan and everything. Um, I spend the night with him and everything. Chill pill. <laughs> <laughs> and so I spend the night with him, and then the next morning we wake up, and um, we hit the shower together. And, you know, things happen in the shower and stuff like that, so... Go figure. And then after the shower... Go figure? Yeah, go figure. You know. Yeah, you're, we know. You're surprised that something happened in the shower? <laughs> well, did you say you met him the night before? Uh, well, I had met him through some friends. Mm-hmm. And everything. And uh, we had done a lot of talking within, like, the two days that we were together. All right. So you got it on with him the night before? Um, yeah. And, and, then, then, it, and yeah. then in the shower. Yeah, and then again after the shower. All right. And um, he seemed like a really nice guy, but I haven't seen him since. Yeah. But he keeps calling me, and I keep oh, calling that, him. That's a good sign. But, well, how long ago was this? Last weekend. Oh, it's been a week. A, a week or a day? A week. A week. It's been a week. All right. Um, yeah. And he calls you. Is he calling you back, or is he calling you? He's calling me back. He's calling you back, but but you're not talking. 
Not really. Why aren't you talking? I don't know. Well, is he leaving messages? Yeah. Does he have your cell phone number? Yeah, he has like every phone number, email address. And he's not getting hold of you. Well, I don't know. No, he could. Guys are pretty good about getting hold of people <laughs> that they need to get hold of, especially when they want to hump them. How did you? How, how did, did you, you leave, leave it? Yeah. yeah, she's not gonna know what that means. Um, what, what happened when he left the morning after you took the shower, or the uh, morning of the shower? Well, um, okay, he takes me home and everything, and he goes, "Are you ever gonna call me again?" And I was like, "Of course, I'm gonna call you." So. You know, I didn't want to seem like I was like, oh, my God, you know, he's really he's really cool and sweet and stuff like that. So um, I call him a day later. He seems really pissed off that I didn't call him. And um, the, the following day? The following day. He's pissed off you didn't call. What, that night? Okay. L- listen. Yeah. Brooke, here, here's, here's uh, I'll give you two choices. A, he's not very interested he's just at all. Up. Yeah. B... He is, but he's just a puss and a tard, and you don't want anything to do with him anyway. C, gay. (laughs) When I'm in Mexico, that's all I say. (laughs) C, gay. (laughs) All right, so so you let him call you because you're special. There's nobody else. There's there's no other Brooks out there except for Brooke Burke and uh, Brooke Shields and Brooke uh, Burns. Brooke Burns. Yeah. Other than those three, Brooks... There's no other Brooks but Brooke from Tulsa. And Foster Brooks. And, and Ryan. Yeah. But Brooke looks listen, this is not the usual guy a hole move. This is a different this is a variation on the theme. Mm-hmm. This is a guy who actually probably is into you, but seems to have some baggage. Seems to have some difficulty yeah. having a relationship. I, uh, you know, if you want to put up with it, fine. I, I, I if I were you rather than waiting, I'd Make your wishes. Now, if you want to date him, put put your Man, let you know, him stake call. your your claim. Look, Go ahead. Everybody thinks I, I I feel I feel compelled to talk about this. True, which is women think the guy was into me, but I pissed him off somehow, <laughs> or I upset no, no, him, no, or no, whatever. No, no. Look, guys, it, this is this is like thinking your dog is mad at you three weeks after you step on its tail by mistake, and right. that's why it's ran away. Right. Right. No, it ran away because it hopped the fence and it tried to hump the neighbor dog and got ran over and it's dead. It didn't really run away. It's actually right, dead. Right. And it's not in dog heaven either. Yeah. There's, er, there is no dog in heaven. Oh. There is a dog hell, however, I, and that's where it is. There's two cartoons about it, though. All he, dogs go to heaven. Here's the, here's the point. He would let you know if he was into you and he's not. <laughs> he would make he, it clear. He strangely did, though. Mad at uh, not bad. Uh, he's just screwing around. Uh, let him call. Uh, not return your calls. Uh, Dana? Dana? Hello? <laughs> Hello? Yeah? Hello? My, na- my name's not Dana. He's gay. Oh, it isn't. What's no, your name? It's Dan. Dan. And right. No, I'm not gay. <laughs> I just, the question. Uh, my question is... Um, that laugh didn't help us not gay case. Go ahead. Go ahead, Dan. <laughs> uh, my question is that I've been uh, with this girl for a while, and we've been friends, and I just got out of a boarding school, and I was wondering if... If I should just remain friends with her, or I should go on with it. Well, you say you've been with her a while. It means you've As known friends. her for a while? Yes. Okay. So I just got out of a boarding school for four years. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I just don't know what to do. Because, one, I've had no male role model my whole life. You guys are pretty much my real mo- role model, you know, oh, for boy. five years. <laughs> That's very sad. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh and so you're trying to understand whether she would be interested? Yeah. Well, I think you got to kind of test the water. It sounds like you're kind of interested in going out with her, right? Yes. All right, so ask her out, and that, that will be your sort of acid test. She will. She seems interested. If she wants to go out, if she's excited about it, you'll know. Don't don't tell her how many times you masturbated to her when <laughs> you were in boarding way, school. Right, I know Adam no, always talks that. about yeah. Adam always talks about how you should yeah how he did that, but that is, even though he's your male, main male role model, it doesn't mean that's what you should do. It's a class move, but it's just too early well, in this relationship. She's never been out with anybody before. She hasn't. So she'll probably yeah. be excited about this, but start with something easy like. Uh, uh, well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. We'll do a little role play. Uh, okay. Uh, you've known her for how many years? Um, one year. One year. Yeah. And you've only been, you've just been friends. Yeah. And where did you meet her? Uh, through school, pretty much. Um, after, Boarding school? No, uh, uh, after the school. Like, right, we were, 
we were seeing each other at, like as friends after the, uh, in when I was at the boarding school, but um, after when I left, we still remained friends. Mm -hmm. Dan, you're a virgin, yes? Yes. That's shocking. <laughs> Hold on a second, uh, Dan. Yeah. Not going to a junior college, though. I don't smell that on you. No. I smell virgin. I'll be going to the uh, Academy of Arts this year in San Francisco. That's right. All right. Hold on a second, Dan. We'll do a little uh, role-playing when we uh, return. Yeah. And also, you know, it's funny, too. Guys that have nothing going socially say, couch things in an interesting way. Like, we've been seeing each yeah. other. There's a right. girl I've right. been seeing. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. seen her walk by. You, you, you've seen plenty of chicks on the TV set, too. <laughs> that doesn't mean you're seeing each other just because you're seeing them. Oh, you understand? God. Yes. All right. But uh, we'll straighten Dan out after this. <laughs> Love line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. I'm looking at the screen, and I don't see Dan. Yeah, he's gone. Did we hang up on Dan? Somebody did. All right. Right, Brian hung up on him. Oh, good <laughs> Well, he had it coming. That nice guy, Virgin. I feel like we need to talk to Dan, even, yeah. though, even though, especially since we hung up on him. He was building his resume. Yeah. Here's... Uh, What's happening? Dan, who is uh, 18, went off to boarding school, met a chick at some other school, has or known her for a year, yeah. wants to ask her out. Uh, he wants some advice. Yeah. Go ahead and ask her out. Yeah. But... We get, you know, you haven't given your talk in a long time about the, the drag the, and the hanging around thing that women do. You, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. 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 Give women me. Women will let you know if they like you. Yeah. And uh, so let's see, what are, what's the criteria, Drew? One is, if they like you, they will make excuses to touch you. And, and I'm not and, talking and, and, about yeah. handies, no. although that does come in time, gentlemen, <laughs> and then grows very old very quickly. <laughs> they, uh, they make excuses such as, if you, if you told a joke, they would go, I got to demonstrate on Drew, yeah. so don't freak on me, dude, because, no, I mean, dude. we're cool. I'm, I'm cool, I'm cool. Okay, but they'll go. Oh, that's so funny. And they'll put their hand on your shoulder. On your shoulder and they go, you crack me up. Or they'll go, oh, please get away. Or they'll do something, be any excuse to put their hand on you. But and the hand, then, yeah. then when they remove their hand from you, instead of pulling. Now, if they don't like you, they pull their hand off like they just put it on wet paint. They recoil. Like they just touched a park bench that had been painted. Or like a, like a, a, a surface that's hot. Like it recoils. No, but they wouldn't touch in the first place if uh, they, 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 they didn't know it was hot. It was like, oh, hey. no, no. I, I think the wet paint. Okay, the wet, wet paint's good. Right. You know why? Because you know you wouldn't drag your hand or keep it there. You would lift it. Okay. Straight up. No, here's why the hot is no good, bro. Because they wouldn't touch you in the first place. Okay. That's what I'm saying. They gotta touch you if it's uh, one of those things where there's a line of people and you're like hugging them and you're uh, you got some promotion or something and some it's always that weird thing when two people hug you and then the third person doesn't know whether to hug you or not. Right, right. But they give you that weird one and they'll just put their hands around you and then they'll pull it off your back like your shirt's uh, covered in uh, wet semi gloss. Right, you know, right. just they don't want they don't want anything to do with you. But if they like you, they give you the drag. They end up going by like, you know what a cat does against your shin when it's hungry, you know, just drags uh -huh. right on you. The tail at the end keeps going. That's right. Oh, That's one. one oh, there you go. Got Drew, it. the mic. <laughs> Drew, this, this is a banner segment. You crapped on one of my analogies and socked the mic all, all in the 20-second period. You are on your game tonight. All right. Finally. Finally. Oh, no. There's probably about 30 more. <laughs> they hang. They linger. They will hang out. It'll be, it'll, the, there'll be a lull. In the conversation. Right, and they just sit and, and don't move. Yeah, there'll be, there's always that conversation at the party. It's always like, so, how do you know Eddie? You know, he's got to do that thing where you're at Eddie's birthday party or Sue's birthday party, and you have to run it. So how do you know that it's the world's stupidest thing? They go, I work with him. And you go, oh, oh okay. Then you start okay. looking around the room. You start looking. You start pretending like you know them. They go, they go like, I'm Connie. I'm in, I'm in the sales department. You go, oh, okay, okay. You do that head nod with the okay. That means I don't know what the F you're talking about, but I'm trying to piece it together, and I'm trying to pretend like Eddie was talking about you and saying, oh, cool. 
I th- and then you do this uh, sort of sort of hazy one where you go, I, it's open ended. I think I, I I think Eddie's brought you up. Yeah, yeah, it's great, it's great. No, he's great, he's great. Everyone just sits around. He's great, he's, Eddie's. Well, you know, he's Eddie. I mean, what can you say about Eddie? He's great. I think he brought you up. Yeah, it's great. So you end up doing that, and then there's a lull. There's a then the beat after your fifteenth. Uh, it's great, and Eddie's Eddie. And then, so it sounds like this. Finally oh, out. no, it's great. Eddie's Eddie. I mean, who doesn't love Eddie? Eddie's great. It's great. It's great. It, it's great. And there's a good long beat in there. Take the deep breath. Now, she should take, if she ain't into you, she's gone. Yeah. That's where, that, now that's that's the lull. Mm-hmm. That's where, that's when the ride stops. Mm-hmm. And uh, if they don't want to go around again, they just climb off right there. Okay, well, I'm going to find him. They'll do something like that, and they'll just turn around and walk away. But if they hang through the lull, that means they're into it. Mm-hmm. The other thing, the other way you know they're uh, into you is uh, when uh, you bring up something and they want to do it, or they're into it, or they want to be into it. Or they make excuses to do it as, rather than excuses not to do it. Yeah. You go, uh, well, I, I went mountain biking this weekend. They go, I've always wanted to do or or I'm into it. Yeah. I'm avid. I'm an avid mountain biker, or I've always wanted to check that out. They all always want to bring up a movie. They've always wanted but to now, see. It. Now give the contrary version of that. When a woman is not does not want to hang with you, does not want to go on a date. Sharp knee right to the testicles. That's that some sometimes happens, but otherwise it would be excuses not even something that you know they like. They'll suddenly not like. Yeah, or even if you ask them out, they'll give the real open ended stuff. Yeah. Like if you say, if you say. How about this weekend? And they go, uh, I'm not. I'm not sure how this stop weekend right is. Stop right there. It's Just done. Stop. It's Just done. Don't even. Don't even think about it's it. It's done. Because I'm not sure means I have nothing going on this weekend, but I got to think of something so I won't be with you. And if they want to be with you, and don't take my word for it, ask anybody you you've ever known and will ever know if they were really interested in somebody, and somebody said, "Would you like to go out this weekend?" 99% of the time, they would either go, or if they had to attend their parents' funeral, they would make it super clear and work it out. Yes. They would say, during the afternoon, I have to sit shiva, <laughs> okay? But as soon as those uh, cold bodies are uh, buried in the I earth, will meet you. <laughs> I will meet you at yeah. the Red Onion in yeah. Redondo Beach. <laughs> All right? Yeah, yeah. That That's how it works. That's they make it, works. it clear. Yeah. And some women and guys do such a good job of not wanting to crush your feelings, they overcompensate a little bit, and they go, this weekend's no good, but I really do want to... Don't listen to that. They're either going out or they're not. In which case, and I think <clears throat> this is a good uh, tact, Drew, which is if somebody says, I can't do it Friday, I can't do it Saturday, I can't do it Sunday, but I really am interested, and you go, yeah. look, I'll give you my number. You call. And if you really are interested, please give me and a call. Now, I'm trying to think like a 17-year-old here. Now, what, what Then it, you kill a prostitute and have sex with their corpse. But aside from that, mm-hmm. what if this sort of in, if somebody's in an intermediate zone? They're, they're kind of, mm, they're just coming off a relationship. They're not really excited about going out with you. But you think, if I could just get them out, I'll get them, win them over kind of thing. That's how a lot of guys think. Yeah, they do. Now, how do they know if they're, they've got that going on? Because you'll get a little bit of that, mm, I don't know about this weekend but maybe yeah that's uh that's, that's uh, a hard one to call isn't it yeah you that o- only experience will yeah. uh be, will <laughs> you need nav- graduate yeah right. you can only a very, a very uh, experienced captain can navigate through those uh, rocky waters yeah. you know what I, mean? I i would agree that's though, a tough that's don't push hard one. don't push don't push, push. Hard. you yeah. push hard they yeah. shut down i like the idea of just leave, leaving the door open leave it in there I'm like hey, when you want right i want yeah and or you know you get that you juice them up <laughs> As the Wee says, you got to juice them up and go. You got to listen. Why don't you think about it over a bottle of Everclear and let's sit down on the sofa here? Oh, my God. No, but you know what I mean? You yeah, yeah. try to hang with them that night. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Here, here's the other thing, too, in terms of uh, not that we're here to tell guys how to get laid, but uh, women that are sort of on the fence and a little so so and not sure if it's a great idea to go out with you next week. Hey, if you're at the party with them, your date's that night. Do you know what I'm saying? No. That may be your only shot. Oh, we really go for that night. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because she's got some boyfriend who's yeah, co- yeah. who he's not sure what their status is and he's coming back from college in ten days and you're trying to work down the road. Forget right, it. Right. That night's your date. And so to close that deal, you want to leave the party with them? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a hot night. Let's go to the reservoir. Yeah. Reservoir <laughs> semen in my pants. What? Yeah. All right. 
Well, uh, but, Drew was a good closer back in his day. Of course, he's been uh, off the circuit for quite some time. Aaron? Hi. You're 23? Yes. What's up? Um, I want to know if there are any long-term um, problems that I can create for my body if I donate my eggs. Well, what have you read so far? Um, well, my cousin has done it, and she's done it like six times, mm -hmm. and nothing bad's ever happened to her. And I've read about it, and I haven't heard of anything really bad that can happen. I'm sure something bad could happen, but right. I've never mm -hmm. had kids, and I don't want to ruin any chance of being able to in the future. Well, the How much do you get for an egg? Um, I've read 3000 to five, uh, 6000 Jesus, what do we get for sperm? Like 35 bucks? <laughs> Yeah, well, what the hell's it's, up it's, with it's, that? It's a supply and demand issue. I would have to fill <laughs> 70 tanker trucks in order which, to match that. Which I'm willing to try okay, for. Yeah. No, but for five grand? Yeah, yeah. Jesus well, Christ. here's the deal. Uh, we don't really completely know. Uh -huh. and, uh, obviously, a lot of women have had this procedure, and so far it looks very safe. There at one time was concern about things like ovarian cancer down the line, but it doesn't look like that's an issue. The uh -huh. one major complication that I have seen from this is that they stimulate the ovaries so profoundly that they, they sort of hypertrophy, they grow and outgrow their blood supply and die. And uh, that can be a pretty serious emergency, actually. Is that from all the... Because I know you have to take, like, two different hormones when yeah, you're it's doing from the, it. Yeah, you're taking drugs. You're taking medications that profoundly stimulate the ovaries, and that's where they get the follicles to form. So your your cousin did it six times? Yeah, she's done it six times, but she says she's done doing it now. And uh, she got paid each time? Uh-huh. So... Do you get paid each time or with each egg? With each egg. Well, so, yeah. So I if mean, they gather, every time. If they gather 10 eggs, you get $10,000 no, or $50,000? No. no, every time you get paid the... Per harvesting, you get $5,000. Yeah, dollars. exactly. Okay. All right. mm -hmm. And uh, Junior college? So you're... <laughs> this may be below junior college. <laughs> this may be junior, junior college. <laughs> Aaron? Yeah? Are you thinking about junior college? I'm already... I got my AA already. I'm actually going to be going so to You already went Long to junior Beach. college. You're going to go to Long Beach. Oh, yeah. so you're, you're junior coll college grad. Yeah. Oh, even worse. Okay, Aaron. Yeah. Uh, uh, so your cousin, did your cousin make $30,000 or $50,000 or um, whatever the hell she could make? Yeah, she made like 26000 Wow. I know. True, I would have been so <laughs> down for this when I was 20 or 23. Oh, my God, can you Well, imagine? that's why I want to get out of debt, and I think it would be the easiest way and... I just All right. don't. Well, it's a little, you know, ethically I worry about these creating markets in people's ovaries and eggs, but uh, there you go. That's your choice. I well, suppose. I mean, who's the egg going to? Some uh, lesbian uh, folk singing couple or people who, you know, can't have children and want children? Exactly. And, and, and what about, and what? how do you look? You good looking? I guess. <laughs> I, I mean, but this, this counts a lot, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm... Five eight. I'm white, blonde hair, blue eyes. Mm hmm. So. Yeah, and you got that junior college degree. <laughs> I just knocked it yeah. down twenty eight hundred bucks. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, uh, yeah, knock yourself out. All right. All right, but don't call it donating. Call it sell. Selling. Okay. Yeah, it's more appropriate. Okay. <laughs> more honest. Yeah. It's yeah. Your your <laughs> your, uh, your cousin made thirty grand donating eggs. That's uh, you, you know what I mean. It's like I I know I know we we sort of use uh use these uh, terms just to uh, cushion the blow a little bit you from a talk societal about donate standpoint. to your hamper. Yes, yes, yeah. That's a more of a deposit than a donation, I guess. Right, right. All right. Where the hell are we, Drew? There. And what about uh, I don't. What do you think about like selling organs and that kind of stuff? Yeah. I I, I don't. I haven't thought it through carefully enough to have a really worthwhile opinion. Mm -hmm. But I know there's grave concerns about the ethics of creating markets in human yeah. organs. Well, people can give away their. They can sell their kidneys. What's wrong with a kidney? They really can't, though. Not not in this country. They, there is a market out there, and people do buy them. Yeah. Well, and, look. Here's the problem. I want to get I mean, you're, this. You're you're finally saying that somebody's life should have a priority over another's. You know. Mm hmm. Yeah, somebody should be able to buy it to survive as opposed to somebody else. Cause kidney, oh, yeah, yeah. Life-saving Well, look, here's, here's the deal. 
Uh, let's face it. You make money, you have a better shot at life. And and all here here's the deal. I'll if, tell you what. I, I, let came, me say a couple of things. Yeah. Forget about that goddamn Hippocratic oath for a second. I was going to say that like it, a man it, for it once. Seemed, for once. I'll, I'll tell you, I did it when I was in the airport okay. in Toronto. Can I can I join you in the conversation? No. And when I realized it, when I couldn't get out of Toronto, but I had time and I had money, and I was able to find a way out. If I didn't have that at that moment, right. I'd still be there. I'd still be there tonight. Right. So. All right. Well, listen. You blowing a sky cap is not. Have anything to do with? I didn't tell you that story, did I? All right. No. Here's what. Here's what I want to say. In, in life, it, look. If you, I, when I was poor, I drove around a mini pickup truck with no airbags and no side impact, anything, and no headrests and no nothing. I think it was like a death trap. A shopping cart hit me, and it would go up in flames, and I'd be dead. You have money, you buy a car that's engineered, it's got airbags, it's got rollover protection, it's got all these impact things. You're much, much safer. You spent it. You spent the money, you did it. It's that way with almost everything. I mean, you buy your way to a safer life. You live in a safer neighborhood. You put an alarm on your house. You have a security, you know, all that stuff. I mean, let's face it, that's the way it goes. It, that's the American way. It gives people who are poor more incentive. And what about poor people in prenatal care and all that stuff? They don't get the same attention yeah. that a wealthy couple would get. I mean, people have a much better shot at life when they have money. And people aren't donating to keep up with the people that need these organs. They're just not. We're so busy doing goddamn PSAs on secondhand smoke being a first-rate killer, no one is informed about this. People need to donate their organs. Mm -hmm. That's retarded religious people don't want to go to heaven without their kidney or their corneas or whatever the hell it is. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's an appallingly low number of people who will put the little donation sticker on their driver's license. Sure and here. you know what? They did a study. God bless you, Drew. Drew's got one. He's wearing a tie in his picture. I have one, too. My hair looks like a racer head on it. Let's see, Drew. Here's the point. They did this little study where they talked to people at the DMV. And here's, the, here's what I hate about people. They're stupid, and they won't do a goddamn thing for anybody else if it means going one inch out of their way. Mm. So when they go to sign up and they go to renew their license, and the person behind the counter says, you want to you donate your organs? The, the guy thinks for a minute. He goes, no. They did a study that if they offered them $100, it'd be like 70% of them would say yes. Wow. Now, these are people that are hanging out at the DMV, you know what I'm saying, but why not? Now, people say that's unethical. Really? To coerce people into being a donor? No, to encourage them. Encourage yeah. them. Yeah. I mean, how? what would you feel like if you or a loved one is sitting around waiting on some endless list and uh, can't do it? You're a doctor. You have money. You have connections. You could save the life of this loved one. No, no. It's unethical. 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 No, get in line. Get in line and wait to die. Really? That that's uh, that's playing God. Hmm. You uh, throwing a few bucks around to uh, get something, and there's a market out there. People want to sell it. What's wrong with that? I, I don't understand this country, and I don't understand why there's no more focus uh, on something like that than there is on some of these other retarded PSAs and these awareness campaigns. We got to hear about secondhand smoke and airplane turbulence and getting your laptop stolen at the airport. Really? That that, that where's that rank up there on people dying who need organs? jackasses all right thank you drew so donate your organs you screwballs oh where's your sticker it's there, there it's it just little that that <laughs> oh. what you look like you you got scared like you're like a cartoon figure i was scared <laughs> with the hair standing up. i was wearing a hat and the guy told me to take my hat off my hair was you know i had a hat head all right true oh. true what are people doing we got to get more ever everyone just do the little sticker thing when you go there to donate your organs. Yeah. I and mean, when you go there to do your license, just You're do right. the donate your organ thing. We'll put that on our on our list of things we'd like people to do after keeping the morning after pill in their cat in their. Yes, yes, it's nothing. I I I, I wonder. It, this ain't the move of an atheist, by the way. No, it's a religious person who thinks he's going to be limping. Or uh, he won't be able to see in heaven. He won't be able to see his mansion that uh, has a golden gate on it. Corneas are gone. Jalissa. It's Jolisa. Yeah. Jolisa. Yeah. Jolisa. Yeah. What's, What's up? Not much. You got to donate your organs. Okay. Uh -huh. Do you know what an organ is? Just do it! Yeah. Okay, we just, let's just sit here and see how long it takes Jolisa to talk. Going for pap smear, very scary, nervous. 
You going for a pap smear, Julissa? Unfortunately. Hmm. Yeah. You angry? No, I'm just, I'm really nervous about it because it's my first one and I don't want to do it. How come? Um, I just, it's really weird thinking that to have like some chick like basically fingering me. Yeah, you hope you get a chick. You probably get a 70-year-old Indian guy. No. Do you yeah, care, you care whether it's it male or female? I would prefer a girl because it would be weird with a guy, but... So are you yeah. sexually active? Uh, yeah. All right, so it becomes really important for you to have a pap smear, right? I know. I just don't want to do it. Do you understand why you do it? No. <laughs> so you don't get cooties down there, honey. So you don't, so you don't get cancer. And That's what I meant. Women that start having sex at a young age are especially high risk for cervical cancer, and it's a deadly kind of cancer. They can be easily cured if they pick it up early. Because I'm, the, like, the reason why I'm having one is because hmm. I'm, like, getting an HIV test, or not hmm. HIV, but STD test. Mm -hmm. How old's your boyfriend? I don't have a boyfriend right now. Okay, uh, but Jaleesa, let's review this again. You think cancer is more important than STD, right? Yeah. Okay, and you started having sex at a young age, right? Yeah. So, yeah. phone's screwing up, so I'm going to put her on hold. All right, anyway. Sound a little angry. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's, it is a scary thing, and yeah. you know, hopefully it's somebody who's sensitive to that, and certainly talk to the doctor about how anxious you are about it. But the reality is it's something that every woman in the country does every year, and you will get used to it. Yeah. God only knows if we're men that had to go through this, whether or not they'd actually get the procedure done, but... Women do. Yeah, isn't it really important? probably dig it. It's an important procedure. <laughs> Don't you think? I, I, you had bleeding out your out your tush one time, and yeah. I, and you were not anxious to proceed. Yeah. With the examination. Well, it turns out that you were just a little rough. Yeah. Yeah, it's nothing. And STD can affect your fertility. It can increase your risk of cervical cancer. And the screening is important to prevent the cancer. So it's all really important both to your survival and your fertility. And that's why it's got to be done. Dr. Ben, the gynecologist, was uh, in here. Not to be confused with uh, Uncle Ben. Yeah, the, and? Uh, mascot from the uh, converted rice. Uh, yeah, yeah. He, uh, is it converted rice? Yeah. I think it's called yeah. converted rice. I don't know why, but. All right. That was another, maybe it was like Catholic and now it's Jew. Converted, yeah. Um, he came in and he said, uh, delight, a uh, delight, by the way. He said that uh, you do not have to uh, get the, uh, see the gynecologist and all that uh, yeah, until you become sexually active, which well, Jolisa yeah. is. But I just mean in general, uh, the common wisdom used to be to go 18. in at 16 or 18 or after your period or whatever. Uh, and now, if you're not having sex, you don't have to go. At all, at any age. Yeah. That's uh, true or not. Hmm? I don't know, it's almost very difficult. It's very rare to have a woman over 23, 24. Is yeah, that? well, no one will listen to shows over 14. Yeah. But that's got to be tough on the gynos because uh, that's a bad bush you get, that uh, 24 never had sex bush. You Isn't know it? what I'm saying? Yeah. That's a bad one. Why? Because uh, the no, no grooming going on there. Oh, I see. A, you're going to have some big thighs uh -huh. as a sort of opening to the cave. You know what I'm saying? I'm listening. You're going to, I mean... You ain't getting some Swedish model in there, the 24-year-old virgin. Oh, I see. You're getting a gal and thighs kind of chafing because they're rubbing together. And you got an area there. Hey, when you're off the sex, you, you let it go. Oh, I it see. It becomes like some house you're not living in. Right. Hey, the lawn's up to here. The yeah. ivy's overtaking the house. Got it. Got you it. see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You don't get that manicured bush at 24 and virgin. God knows. You've got uh, raccoons and uh, squirrels running around in there. It's a, it's a mess. It's a mess. I'm flashing on some experiences I had in, in, in medical yes, school. Yes, am I right? Yeah. <laughs> right. All right. <laughs> Still traumatized. <laughs> yes. All right. We are uh, we are going to take ourselves a little break. We'll be right back after this. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. All right. Did you fart, Drew? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Jen? Yes. You're 20? Yes. What's up? Um, me and my boyfriend's been together for about a year now, and um, I had some, like, red dots um, down below. And I went to my doctor's, and he said it's called molluscum. And mm -hmm. he, he said he gave me all this information about it, and I was kind of, like, really confused, and I didn't understand what he was saying. I was wondering if you guys could uh, 
help me out here. It, it's a virus. Uh huh. Okay, and it usually occurs. The little rash occurs in the pubic area. Right. And it sort of looks like a bunch of little zits. Right. But when you pull the white head off, it's not. There's no liquid and no white liquid. It's just sort of a little white marbly thing at the top. Right. And it can spread, so it's important to sort of control them, and they usually use liquid nitrogen and things like that to sort of get rid of them. Right. And once you take them off, they, they can come back, but it tends to go away by itself. Okay, and did I get this from my boyfriend? Probably, although you, is this your first guy you've had sex with? Right, yeah. So, yeah. Now, where do you, how, what, what, what are they? I, what is it? I don't I just, know. I, didn't know. I just said it. Yeah, but is there something that gets in there? Or is it a, it's a virus. It's a virus. Yeah. All right. So I probably got, got it monkey from bite. him. I probably got it from him. Yep. And is there like a time? I've been with him for a year now. So did he like cheat on me? And I got no, it from him. No, yes, not, definitely. Ne not necessarily. Not necessarily. So he no. could have had it before, and it like yeah. stay dormant in him. Yeah. Or you may have had one and not noticed it, and it took quite a while before the others developed. Okay. And he said they go away. Like if you you don't have to treat it, they just go away. Yeah, they, they can become pretty numerous, though, so it's usually recommended that you put some liquid nitrogen on them and sort of fry them off that way. A little way. Oxy-10 couldn't hurt either. Okay. <laughs> that, stuff, that stuff is magic. And they, what we, I used to call them, they, they also can shell them out. You can sort of scoop the yeah. top off. He was them. a melon baller. Melon baller, yeah. Let me tell you what I was doing last night. I was uh, attempting to uh, take a picture of a lit fart. Oh, my God. Because you're with your jack-off friends for yeah. a couple of days, and then pretty yeah. soon you start thinking about taking pictures of yourself lighting a fart. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. So we had uh, one of the guys had the digital camera. Yeah. So I'd be like, all right, well, next time we got a fart, let's light it, and let's take a picture of it. Don't digital cameras usually flash twice, though? They take a while from yeah. the time you push yes. the button oh my God. <laughs> to the time it actually takes the picture. It's about three seconds. Uh -huh. It's like, here it is. You push the button. It's like, one Mississippi. Two Mississippi, three, click. That's when the picture's taken. It took us a while to figure this out, and then we started try, trying to time it. So one guy would be there with his uh, knees up around his ears, and he'd like be holding the thing, and the guy who's holding the camera would be like, no! And uh, the, I'd yell back, wait, you can't just yell now. Like, I, I, I'll tell you, and then right. what I'll do, and when I say now, you push the button, and then two and a half, three seconds later, Hopefully, Maybe, yeah. I can light this baby up like a Roman candle. Yeah, it's not, not what you call a, a skeletal motor function. No. It's not like moving your finger. No, I, here's what I explained to uh, Sandy, the guy who told me now, yelled now at me, and then did. I said, listen, this is a dangerous stunt. When, when, when Evil Knievel would get to the top of the takeoff ramp after everything had been secured and the crowd was in place and he'd done his warm-up laps and everything, he sat there and they said, Evil you go when you're ready. They didn't have some jack off yelling now. Right. Adam Jump. Anderson. No, yeah. no. He sat there. He did that thing. He checked the chain, rubbed it on his boot, then gave the thumbs up and took a couple of beats. You know what I'm saying? That's what I was like when I was trying to light that gas last night. I didn't need some guy yelling now at me. And we tried about eight times. <laughs> Couldn't do it. We got real close, though. Real close. There's one that was really, I, my timing was. Do you, you remember know. him trying to s jump across the Snake River? Yeah. And it was a big sporting event. Yeah. What the hell was the matter with people in the 70s? Evil. Not yeah. just him, but us. Yeah, he was going to jump across it in a motorcycle, except for it was more of a... Snake River was about a mile across. Snake River was a mile across, and he was flying a missile. Yeah. He's not flying a motorcycle. A missile, and... and yeah. And he took, with, yeah. And he took... Yeah. And he took off, and his parachute popped out like a cartoon before he got off the takeoff launch pad. Uh -huh. Yeah. Could have been disastrous for all the evil. But now he's alive and he's doing uh, commercials for uh, wristbands you wear that alleviate pain. <laughs> Vanessa? Yes. You're 19? Yes. What's up? Do you know who Evil Knievel is? Yes, I do. Oh, wow. That's good. <laughs> uh, um, do, you have a, do you have a sticker on your license to donate your organs? No, I don't actually. You know what I was going to tell you is they don't even ask. It's like at the MVD down here, they don't, they don't say anything yeah. about it. That's the other thing, too. I, I, I can't. I'm not going to go nuts, but here's what I can't figure out. How come we give equal time in this society to the things that mean nothing as opposed to the things that mean something? And they both get the same amount. 
Yeah, actually, the things that mean nothing different. get more. Like yeah. it just nothing but secondhand because, because smoke talk over the last two years, and no donate your organs that's talk. That's politics. Somebody gets somebody who has a thing about that gets their way. But we're running PSAs on on air turbulence and having McGruff tell you to put your goddamn seatbelt on, and yet nobody says anything about organ donation, and the jack off at the DMV doesn't say anything either. I mean, you know, shouldn't all right. which reminds me, in addition right. to there being a uniform age. Of uh, consent. Oh, we, we got to clean need, up this land room. We need all to decide what the Department of Motor Vehicles is going to be called. Do you notice what they call it in Arizona? And the no, you motor, call vehicles, it? motor Vehicles Division. It's the, the MVD out here. It's pretty weird. MVD. Yes. Oh, from my California, God. That's got a DMV. negative kind of <laughs> Yeah, and so when you say DMV, they don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I say MVD, and people are like, what? <laughs> yeah, but you got the venereal disease initials uh, right in there. <laughs> uh, but just think what a pain in the ass DMV is. It doesn't seem like yeah. that's about right. Yeah. Uh, Oh, boy, am I going to clean house. <laughs> well, if I'm in charge, first I start with that DMV. You know what I do with that DMV? I, no, I, well, first I light off a few uh, holiday foggers in there so uh, all the vermin <laughs> can't make it out the street. And then I torch the place. Until, and I just imprison everyone who works there. Let's face it, they've done something wrong. They're making it for three hours. Time. They could ask you if you wanted to donate your organ. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah. Um. I am 19. I started dating somebody when I was 17 that worked for my parents' company that they own. Mm -hmm. um, I graduated high school and moved out with him. I own my own home. You know, I work hard. And um, Why didn't you I, go to school? I, I did go to school. Up until we got the house just about six months ago, I was going to school. I did like 13 credit hours, some ridiculous amount of school. Mm -hmm. And I'm going back to school. I'm going to ASU, and I'm working full-time. And I'm an idiot, and I put him on the house. <laughs> uh -oh. And for, like, the past three months, um, he's actually been staying in another room. We don't talk. We don't, we don't have sex. We don't do anything. That's comfortable. And, What's, um, why? What's the problem? Well, I decided I wanted to see other people, and we broke up. What does this guy do? He is a plumber. A plumber. Your dad has a plumbing company? Yeah, a commercial plumbing company. And did you uh -huh. buy the house together? No, it was all my money, and what? I, you know, was an idiot. We're going to be together forever, put him on the house. You know, mm -hmm. stupid stuff. And yeah. he's coming and off the house, but the problem is now is someone has worked for my parents for a while. We've been friends, been interested in him for a long time. Another plumber. Yeah, why don't you not date guys that you're well, business? Can't get enough of that crack. We, we met each other prior to that. Yeah, but and again, Vanessa... Why don't you not work date guys who work for your dad's business? I don't care how you. Well, my them. parents, my parents don't care. I'm an adult. I can do what I want to do. That, that mm -hmm. Vanessa, you got boundary problems, and it, it, as such, you're going to have to sort of be careful with how you manage boundaries. You put your boyfriend. You, you're sort of expansive. You put your boyfriend on your house title, and you, you're going to constantly date these guys that work with your dad. That, that's not right. That's not good. You it, need to, it's not that, constantly. And when I met him, he wasn't working there. He had to do whatever you want to do. There. Well, the, the, the problem is now is that I've, I've started seeing someone that I, that I really, really like. Really yeah. like. And my parents know I'm seeing him. The only problem does he, is... Does he work for your dad's business? No, yeah. not anymore. Not no. anymore. Right. No, he works for his own parents' company. Oh, but so. him and my ex are friends. Jesus He's very Christ. uncomfortable about the situation, but we, we really, really like each other. And, yeah. you know, my boyfriend just moved out, and I don't, I don't know what to do. All right, now, I don't know how to make him feel better about the hold situation. Hold on. Quiet. You say your boyfriend just moved out? I thought a minute ago he said he was staying in another room and you weren't having sex. We've been living together. He's been staying in another room, and I just I kind of got sick of it and was like, if, if this is the way it's going to be, you need to pack and go. Oh, with the S words. Listen, All Vanessa, right, speaking of packing the S and go. Yeah, Vanessa's got uh, a lot going she's on. She's a ball cracker, that Vanessa. She's, uh, she's a handful. Huh? 19. I own my own home. I'm going to go to ASU. You can pack your S and go. Oh. And then Her dad's when you, a plumber. And when you, you try want? to talk to her about the boundary issues, she wants to argue about it and talk you down on my it. My parents know. Yeah. Yeah. She's probably hot, though. Vanessa? Yes? A ball buster like yourself must be mighty hot. Because <laughs> nobody would put up with this. <laughs> yeah? Am I right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, I am like in the wrong. I mean, I, I do overstep boundaries. That's very true. All right. Well, but, I'll listen. But I really, I really like him, and he's 
Yeah. All right. Well, you really. Oh, okay. here, here's the deal. You can. I can. The, my crystal ball tells me the future already. So enjoy. You you like the guy. Your mm -hmm. ex is out of the house. Mm -hmm. So you date the guy. And what's, what's the question? How do I handle this when everybody finds out? Well, he doesn't work for your parents anymore, does he? No, but him and my ex are friends. Well, they're not friends. They go out together every once in a while. All right. Well, tell him just to back off on that. Now, uh, now he's got uh, a new person in his life. Uh, just not, leave not... it up to him and say, you know, if you like me, you can kind of not yeah. hang out with him so much. Well, I think he'll do that naturally because it'll be uncomfortable. Uh, later on, they'll both be laughing about you having a beer talking about what a bitch you are. Yeah. So you got that. That's the angle I would approach it from. Listen, she needs to go to school, not have any relationships for a little while, and just get focused on having a life without a man. Yeah. That, that, this is not a healthy situation with the way she's managing her life. 19. Really? Think about this. Well, listen, well, not, uh, you're going to own a house in Arizona at 19 at like 80 bucks. You know, the house brings her boyfriend in, the guy works for dad, then I go for another guy that works for dad. and uh, it's, just, it's just not that's yeah. bad, bad, bad. Yeah. And it's all being done under a 180 degree sun. Which, over we, which there we, in love. we You and I love oh. that, huh? You know, I had a good time driving from uh, Big Sur, Pebble Beach, Carmel, Northern California into LA today. Every 75 feet on the highway, I would check the temperature. <laughs> and I watched it go from 72 degrees to like 108 oh. as I was coming into like the Antelope People Valley. People don't appreciate the, oh. the diversity of oh. climate in California. Oh. <laughs> it's temperature. Oh. The climates are all kind of the same. Oh, and it was really something like horrible happened, which is at a certain point, I don't know where we were, but we were in like cow country. I blew some gas. Oh. The guy screamed, rolled the windows down for the first time, and 108-degree cow ass came blowing into the car. And it was I almost gagged, almost That's went nice. off the road. Yeah, it's beautiful. I don't know why I ever came back. We'll be back after this. Hey, yo, it's the Love Line. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number. Uh, nah, we don't need any phone numbers. No. What's up there, Drew? I don't know. What are you doing with my sticky there? I'm just moving it. Let's... Hey! Follow the ball up. Quit your drinking. Drop your lane and ball. Stop it. Go below. Stop it. Ball. Stop it. Ball. Stop it. Ball. Stop it. Ball. Tammy, stay shy. Stay shy. Tammy. Stop it. Ball. Stop it. Ball. Stop it. Ball. Businessman's lunch. Uh, two or three. All buffalo chicken wings. Stop it. Stop it. Ball. Stop Wow. Yeah. No, I didn't go to any strip clubs. No strip clubs? I, didn't, I, didn't, I just I went to dinner a couple of times. That was it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. like big... Oh, I found a gym. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. It's life in the fast lane. Yeah, Drew's gear, everybody. Yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> Our wives must love us when we travel. Drew's uh, looking for a place to jog and a place to eat. I'm lighting farts with the three guys in a room trying to take a picture of it. Yeah. <laughs> You got nothing to worry about, do that. <laughs> no, not really. Sarah? Hello? You're 22? Yes. What's up? Okay, um, I was just wondering about um, maybe I might have been sexually abused or something when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's possible that maybe... Why, I... why, why? What's, what's happening? What's the problem? Okay. The thing is, I'm, like, addicted to thinking about, like sex and stuff like that. What do you mean addicted to it? Well, I think about it constantly, like all the time. Well, all a lot of people do that. What, what makes it abnormal? Well, I, I feel like I'm addicted to it. I feel like it's what I think about mm -hmm. every day, all the time. You're preoccupied. Yes. It's I'm taken over your life. Yeah. But do you act on it? Well, I masturbate, and I have a boyfriend, and, and we masturbate each other, but we're both still virgins. Mm -hmm. How often does that happen? How often do we masturbate? Do you? Um, pretty frequently, like almost every day. Mm -hmm. And uh, you want to remain a virgin until you're married? Yeah. Are there any consequences from your preoccupation? I mean, really, addiction, sexual addiction in particular, have well, to I mean, have some sort of... Been, there's been times where, like, I was late to work or, like, things because like you're that. 
Because you're masturbating. Because it was more important to me, yeah. But it's only still only once a day. It's not like throughout the day, multiple times, spending money or losing relationships, that sort of thing. No, I guess not. Okay, mm. so it may just be your sex drive. I mean, this. Well, also, uh, too. Um, I don't know. What's your religion? Uh, I'm sorry that I don't really want anybody to figure out who I am, and it's not a very big group. I see. Jehovah Wicked. Wicked. Uh, no, no. This is. This is like Jehovah's Witness kind okay. of stuff. Okay. Wiccans are just fat chicks who recycle. They do, they diddle themselves a lot, Lord knows. Well, but that's because they can't get any <laughs> they can't get any schlong, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, you're one of those Jehovahites. That's what I'm guessing. No, it's not. Yeah. It's that's not, who you're going down. You're going down in my book as Jehovah's Witness until I've proven otherwise. Okay, it's not okay. Jehovah's Witness, so that's all I'm gonna say. All right. But you like you're you're into God, not you don't worship a plant or anything, right? Yeah, I'm into God. Okay, but. good times. Now, so here, here's the uh, thing. First off, God is more pissed off at the uh, mutual diddling that's going on than he, when he would be if you guys just got it on. That's uh, number one. But, and I know that for a fact. Because, <laughs> Do you, you know, know God? <laughs> well, he's in me. <laughs> he's in everyone, right? That, that's right. That's right. And I have a personal relationship with uh, him, and he uh, told me that he didn't like you two diddling each other. All right. Yeah, that's number one. Uh, but uh, number two, somebody, and Drew, I'll, I'll speak to you about this, but somebody's a little uptight about the religion and their sexuality. A little would seem like a lot. Yeah, right. That's true. Like what you're doing feels extra dirty and extra obsessive, and if it was just your basic atheist, it might not feel like much. Right, because you you believe somehow you should be having not having these sorts of thoughts or not having these preoccupations, See, therefore when you do, you feel... that too. I wonder if right. it's like the taboo or whatever. You know no, what no, I it's think? Not, it's not it, that no. the taboo is causing it, it's that your expectations are you would have less than you do. I think you're somebody, I think, you know what I think it is? I think it's like somebody with an eating disorder or issues around food has a, a hamburger and they think about it all day, whereas your normal person eats the burger and never thinks about it again. Right. It doesn't mean the hamburger's worse for you than it is for the other person. It just means you obsess on it. Okay. So, so it's not like you're eating 20 hamburgers. You're eating one hamburger just like the guy who eats the burger and doesn't think about it. Uh-huh. But so you, you think that you're faulty or there's something wrong with you. Yeah, I think you're obsessing on it when you don't need and, to. And, and remember, women have a huge spectrum. There's a, there's a vast difference one woman to, the, to another in terms of how they experience their sexuality. Some women do not have a lot of sexual thoughts. Some have a much more uh, testosterone-driven or progesterone, in their case, uh, sexual kind of orientation. They, they, they think about it frequently. Like a male thinks about it something like six times a minute. Yeah. And most females don't unless, again, they're sort of charged up biologically. Some will. How, how do they do those tests? Like I just sit, design. just sit there in a uh, clinical setting, and I'm like, okay, oh there you go, okay, that's one, okay. No, really, it's kind of like. Uh, the, uh, 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 no, no, that was that was kind of half of one. I was thinking about one of my sister's friends, but I didn't really do anything with her. No, it's really like a homer. It's like a Simpson episode where they hold a screen up to your head and look at a little guy inside there and what he's doing. Masturbating. Yeah. Every right. time he grabs for himself. I talked to Eddie for a second. He's been on hold for a thousand years. He's 19. Eddie? Oh, great. Um, my question is, uh, my girlfriend, well, she has a problem. Her palms are very, very sweaty. Mm -hmm. To the point where they drip sometimes. She wants to correct that? I'm sorry? She wants to correct that? I would. I want to know if there's uh, any methods to actually correct that. Yeah, there's surgeries for that, for sure. The, the, yeah, it's like getting a handy from a mermaid. It's actually, it's pretty simple. It's, it's an outpatient procedure, and it just That's sort of good one. changes the, uh, changes the um, function of the nerves supplying the palm, basically. Yeah. You know. they, they clip something under your arm or yeah. whatever. It's, it's pretty simple. So you, you should look up. You know, talk to an anesthesia department at one of the local hospitals and see if they know someone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Usually these are anesthesiologists they, 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 that do this. They advertise now and stuff. Where are you calling from? Long, Long Beach. Beach. Long Beach, yeah. Uh, open, you know what, open like the, uh, I don't know, you guys got like a Long Beach uh, Reader or Long uh, Beach Weekly, one of those rags. Yeah, I, have that, to, I have to hang on, my phone's going to die. All okay, right. that's cool. Uh, All right. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> You get one of those free papers where they just advertise uh, boob jobs and futons. Oh, really? And enemas. Nice. Like the L.A. Weekly. Here's, here's, here's what it is. The L.A. Weekly talks about um, um, Sandinistans, uh, and then there's a futon ad, 
and then there's some talk about uh, GM destroying the rainforest, and then there's a boob job ad, and then there's six enema ads, and then you'll find like a sweaty palm ad in there nice. too. Nice. All right, good times. Have you read one of those? Have you thumbed through there lately? Not, not in the detail. No. Just crazy stuff. Yeah. You, you, you would be shocked what they're allowed to advertise. Wow. Yeah. Futons and enemas, everybody. Rosie, I, I, evidently the futon crowd and the enema crowd and the uh, Sandinistas. One of the same. It's all the same group. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. What's up? Uh, my question is about a yeast infection. Um, I'm a lesbian. And uh, my partner and I were having oral sex, and I realized shortly after this one time that I was having symptoms of a yeast infection. And I know that candida, like, occurs naturally in different parts of the body. And what I'm wondering is, like, I took one of the little monostat thingies. Like, could it be in her mouth? There is and such like, a thing. It's called oral thrush, and it's usually in people that are immune compromised or been on some medication. But even then, it's not something that's passed. So oh, it really is, so it's it's more about her just having sex disrupting the normal sort of environment in your vagina. And almost anything can trigger a yeast infection. And so there you go. So, like, she's not going to get a yeast infection because she went down on no. me? No. 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 And, no, no, no. And it's not going to, like, be in her mouth because she went down on me. And when she goes down no. on me again, she's going to give it back. Uh, there is, it, yeah, I mean, there's a finite possibility of that, but very unlikely. Very unlikely. So she doesn't need to medicate anything or nothing. No. I got to no. medicate. Not unless you keep having recurrences, then you both ought to be seen. She can gargle with a little Listerine, right? <laughs> or Monistat uh, Aid or something. Yeah. Uh, good, okay. good times. Good times. Thank we used you. to have, we used to have our times. AIDS patients suck on these Monistat suppositories before we had good ways of dealing with the... It's good times, huh? Really? Mm -hmm. Sucking on Monistat to get the Vaginal thrush out of their mouth? Yeah. We got to go. All right. We'll be back. moment too soon. Gotta go home, drink my red wine, and nap. Oh, great. Nap, baby. Oh. <laughs> Drove out to uh, Pebble the, the, Beach the, all through the night on Thursday. You don't usually bed. call the overnight sleeping napping. I, I now look at it as napping because okay. my schedule's so effed up. All right, so until next time, this is Adam Kroll for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Anyway, I love buying it's the best damn radio show out. Dr. Drew and Adam Kroll are some bad mothers. Shut your mouth. <laughs> This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Anne Engold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.